brought a beach ball. <laughs> no, I was uh, telling Rory about the why well, I've been enjoying the Swiss ball lately, and it was in my van anyway, so we brought it to the uh, the tarn. What tarn are we actually, by the way? Uh, we're at Le Frig Tarn. Le Frig Tarn. Okay, this is a really cool That's place, it. by the way. It's really beautiful. We've got the Langdale Pikes in the background. Yeah. Can't quite see them there, but. Anyway, I thought, what better place to like play on the Swiss board? You know, do it inside the house. Why not on a nice patch of grass by the lake? When I got into rope flow and I was amazed at like how it makes the, the left and the right hand communicate, it completes a circuit so that the left hand, if the left hand moves, the right hand has to react to it because they're connected by the rope, so they're, they're speaking. And I was like, how can, we find a, a foot version for the feet. Like, I'm gonna have to grab a rope between my toes, hang from a bar, and swing the rope from my feet. And it's, I f we found it. it was, David Weck found it. When you stand on a Swiss ball, if my right hand, if my right foot moves, if it moves right, left, if it pushes the pressure down, because you're pushing into the ball, it puts pressure out of the left, into the left foot. So every decision and movement my right foot makes, the left foot feels it and has to react to that. Every movement my left foot makes, my right foot feels it and has to act. So they're in communication, externally completing the loop. It's a circuit, look, down and round, and it goes both ways. And then when you have a rope, you've got the circuit with the arms. And so my body's just learning balance. It's 3D mapping itself right now, just standing here the body's making its own calculations, I just have to focus on the task. And it's learning to 3D map, it's learning to become balanced. And that's one of the, you know, children, one of the first things children learn, they get spine strength and core strength and then they learn to stand up and they learn balance. And then they wait till they're about 18 and then they get strength, balance before strength. So we're going back to that. This is my uh, adult version of learning to balance. So the main ones that I've run through is a warm up with, with some kneeling normally. So I'll do that. Then I'll also do some sitting, which is relatively easy, but then you try and build further up your spine with it, using your hand. Contralateral balance, where you've got the opposites off. Because now you're getting the right hand and the left leg are in communication. Standing, oh, I do this sometimes for a bit as well the one legger like that and if you can let the hands go because then the hamstrings are being lengthened but also stabilized this is all the spine muscles that pull you into good posture that lift your neck you know puff your chest out to here and then and also you might as Weck pointed out to me in the beginning your limbs are gonna fly out to try to rebalance you and eventually it becomes a more subtle the very much more subtle movements where it might just be the fingers moving and the toes twitching and the, you know the ankle to keep you balanced like your cheetah's tail or your squirrel tail <laughs> 